I'm happy to be joined by Coach Kennedy Palomalu, Vikings running backs coach here inside the TCO studios virtually. And Coach KP, you have the opportunity to coach arguably the best running back group in the NFL with arguably the best running back in the NFL in Dalvin Cook. How does he continue to progress in year five in his career? Well, it, it, again, it's, um, it's everything uh, by, by um, how he prepares for the season. Um, football is it's uh, if you take down the, the time and the game, it's, it's not that long. But it, the general time is, is how you prepare yourself in the off season uh, during the week. And he's in a good routine and everything. Uh, and again, he has progressed ever since, you know, he and I have come in together. Mm -hmm. We're going into our fifth season together. And uh, this young man, like you said, can do it all. He, and he can run routes, he can catch the football, he can pass protect, he can run short yardage, he can run regular down distance. Um, but the, the qualities that he has is he's a leader, uh, he's a great teammate. Um, but what we're looking for is, and I don't want to say legacy, because the young man, this is who he is. He, he loves the game. He loves the preparation. He loves his teammates. And uh, it's sure fun to be around him. Can he get better at a lot of things? Yes, he can. And that's the fun part. That, that's, that's the scary part for defenses, right? Seeing Dalvin get better at something after having a year like last year. So do you stress, hey, Dalvin, keep, keep putting pressure on this defense. We're going to keep giving you the ball. That's the number one thing. You got to put pressure on him. And that, you know that's a relationship of how we're going to run the football, how we get the ball in his hands. We talk as an offense all the time. How many times do you want to see Dalvin play? You know, Zim asked the other day, what do you, what number counts? I go, it's not a number count. Is I like to see him touch the ball 25 plus times a game. Mm -hmm. Well, in an average offense uh, plays are 65. So that limits a lot of things. And, but you don't want to get them, you know, 25 straight catches or 25 straight runs and you take them out of the game. So it's, a, it's the flow. And that's what's so good about this young man. It's, it's very difficult to take him out of the game because you want him to touch the football in every down. For sure. And I mean, that, that only makes the offense better. But I want to rewind back to 2007 when you were coaching in Jacksonville. You had the opportunity to coach both Fred Taylor and Maurice Jones Drew that year, and they both had phenomenal years. Understanding that one-two punch that you had then, how motivating is it for you now to be able to build up Alexander Madison, to be able to compliment Dalvin like he's already doing? Uh, I think it's important. I think every running back coach uh, uh, would love to have that. And that was really important in how we built it. Uh, Fred Taylor should be and possibly be in the Hall of Fame soon. And Maurice Jones Drew, uh, we actually uh, – was very fortunate and lucky to draft him because we weren't ready to draft another running back. But what made him special is he was a punt returner. He was an all-American punt returner and we needed a punt return. And that's kind of how teams are built. You can't, your second or your third just can't be a running back. He's got to be able to bring another uh, impact in special teams or something special uh, they allowed that. So you talk about those two is uh, you had Greg Jones at fullback, mm -hmm. kind of what we have with CJ Ham. Every single one of those guys are, are really good teammates, good people. And that's kind of what we built here. So when we had an opportunity for to get Dalvin Cook and then turn around and, and, and have an opportunity to draft uh, Alexander Madison, they just complement each other. You can't, uh, you know, unselfishness, uh, uh, don't need a real fast spark uh, to get the second guy going. And it happened to us this year uh, at Houston. You know, Dalvin runs and boom, gets down to three. Uh, he, he gets a hit in the stomach and he comes out of the game. Next play, boom, Alexander's in the end zone. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you have those one, two, and I was fortunate enough here and there to have three, four, and possible five, that it's, a, it's, a, it's one of those special, special deals. For, for Matt, what are some year three goals that you have for him? I know he has his own, but as a coach, what are some for him? Well, it, I think uh, we do that every off season, you know, as soon as the season ends. And then when we take time away, I've already written up a lot of those things. Uh, and he's such a pro already. Mm -hmm. He's an unbelievable young man, humble, 
uh, which is the whole room, um, tough, smart, uh, but he knows uh, things. Uh, he's got to learn the, the, the what combinations are, what the second level fits are, and uh, what we call our cheats, and then utilize those cheats. Um, you know, like it just, you know, where what's going to happen now you, you can manipulate that. And I think that's the next level for him. Well, you, you talked, we talked about Alexander Madison, Dalvin Cook, but you briefly talked about CJ Ham. Like, how does he make this entire room better? Not only on the field, but off the field also. It's just a, a, a awesome teammate, uh, unselfish, tough, smart. Um, and then he's a, he's a core teamer. Um, the kids, the young man, I know, I know I say kids sometimes, but I apologize, but these young men, uh, they know how to take care of their bodies. They, uh, they know how to uh, represent the community. Uh, they know they have to make good decisions and that's on and off the field. And that's CJ. CJ, you can put him in any spot on our offense uh, system. And that young man can line up in all the concepts, uh, understands what the tight ends doing, the receivers doing, the, the halfbacks doing, the quarterbacks read progression, hmm. and uh, and then have the ability to put himself in a spot that uh, can make plays. And uh, it's unbelievable. <laughs> For sure, having a guy like that, I can just compliment the entire team. That's what you need. And I, I talked to um, Andrew Janoko and Clint Kubiak, and we were talking about the connection and the chemistry that a quarterback and receiver has to have. One thing that we get that we did not get the chance to talk about is the chemistry that the running back and the offensive lineman has to have to be to have an effective offense. So could you talk about that a little bit, that chemistry that those two position groups have to have? Well, I always tell them that I always tell the running backs, I always tell the offensive line, you guys have the same traits. And they laugh and they're like, well, you have to be tough. You have to be smart and you have to be athletic enough. And uh, when you tell a lineman that he's athletic, it kind of, you know, that kind of brings that bond. <laughs> and uh, the relationship in the run game, you have to, like we talked about uh, a little bit about Alexander Madison, has to improve on his, okay, is the three technique or is it a shade? Is it a two eye? Okay, what's the combination? Is that a single block by a left guard or is that a combination with the center and the left guard? Is it a combination with the tackle and the tight end? Those are things, and then you can manipulate the second level. Okay, so if there's a combo going to that second level, okay, if I cut back right now, that doesn't give my lineman any opportunity to block that second mm -hmm. level because he's a better athlete. He's going to redirect and go where the ball is. And then in the pass game, protection-wise, okay, if the if if all of a sudden they change it where the your backer is on the line of scrimmage, now the tackle takes him or he doesn't take him. You got to know that. And part of that is nonverbal communication and understanding what's going on. It's a relationship that's, and like everything else, it's, you have to do it over and over together and have that continuity. And then that continuity helps you uh, make plays and perform on game day. For sure. Um, lastly, last year was uh, the most team rushing yards the Vikings have had since 2012 when we set the franchise record. I think it was 2000. Uh, 634 yards back in 2012 with everything that we knew all the the plays that we wish we could get back in 2020 do you think 2600 rushing yards as a team is achievable in 2021 i really don't look at those numbers okay. um but we uh, we really tighten it down and uh, my goals with my guys is i want i want at least seven or more earned first downs uh, i want uh you know, two or more explosive runs of 12 yards or more. I want uh, two or more receptions explosive. I want efficiency, uh, meaning that it, you, you, you know, you get four yards on first down plus four or more. And in the rest, and that to me leads to more downs, more possibility of calling runs mm -hmm. and then tilting the field and establishing toughness to our offense and then rushing yards, I mean, rushing touchdowns. But if we do those things or little details that we go through as a unit uh, and keep it in that focus, and our goal is to have more than seven earned first downs. And then our goals there, if we reach those goals, 
those numbers can be reached. But if we don't reach those goals, we're not gonna get close to those numbers. Mm. Well, I know the running back room is a huge part of the success of this team. So coach, I'm looking forward to the success this team is gonna have in 2021. Thank you for joining me today and best of luck this offseason. season.